Uh, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm joined today all the way from Cape Town, the mighty Justin Smith. How are you doing, brother? I'm all good in this off. I'm fantastic. Thank you, man. Uh, thanks so much for your time, man. I know you, you're getting ready for a fight, so I'm sure it's uh, all systems go at the moment. Um, bro, where I just wanted to start is just to kind of get a couple of details from you if we can. Um, how this all started, how, how you got into MMA, and, and, and where the journey actually began. Um, so I actually started when I was about I think, 14 years old. I had a mate of mine who used to do, he was a uh, kickboxing champion actually. So from there, I asked him to let me. He only gave me two sessions and then he was acting arrogant. So I just decided to prove him that I can't make it without him. So I made a guy named Cristiano. He started training me at the back of his house and I just kept coming every single day, every single day. And then that's how I started. That's how I started. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, j just talk us through the kickboxing. Was that something you pursued as, as a professional or as an amateur? Um, I always wanted to do uh, MMA, but I got uh, caught up with doing kickboxing because uh, there wasn't really much uh, MMA competitions. And the guy who was training it was a uh, white. He's a boxing champion, and also a kickboxing champion, so he was mostly trained in, in the streets, so there were no mats and stuff like that, so I was just focusing on kickboxing. And then if I get a chance to go to East Gym, then I'll be training in the main. So that's how I got stuck into uh, kickboxing. Okay. Um, and and uh, did you have any uh, fights as a kickboxing professional? Yeah, I, I had like uh, three. My first professional fight was to the was for a K1 title. Your first fight? Yeah, first, first professional. First professional. I had a couple of championship fights, but my first fight, my first professional fight was for a K1 title and I won it. Oh, fantastic. How did you win? KO? I won first one KO, yeah, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. And um, it, it, you're obviously... Um, uh, living and operating out of Cape Town, uh, originally from the DRC. So, so just talk us through how that how that all ha happened. When did you get here? Was it was it your family that moved here, or, or, or what's the connection? Uh, so basically, um, I was born here. My parents are from the DRC. I was raised up in Cape Town. Okay, fantastic. And uh, have your parents been here for a long time? Yeah, my parents have been here for a while. Okay, fantastic. So you're a little bit more South African than uh, a DRC mm -hmm. member. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Um, so, what made you transition into MMA? Then you said you were you were doing kickboxing, kind of that that's what was available at the time, that sort of thing. So, so what was the urge to to transition into MMA? Um, I just saw, like, what can I say? Like I said, I always wanted to do MMA, but I never had the chance to train. I do know the jiu jitsu, so I just decided to focus more on my stand up. And whenever I get an opportunity to train groundwork, I would like just train, you know. And I always wanted to do it. Reason being, I, I looked up to a guy who's like, he's like a stand up fighter and also a ground fighter, but you know, I like his stand up, which is Anderson Silver. So I always wanted to be someone like him, so that's, that's why I didn't want to give up fighting. I was to give up fighting. I just decided to keep up until I got to a stage where I started competing in MMA and I just continued continue fighting in MMA. Okay, fantastic. And you you picked up a couple of amateur titles along the way as, a, as an MMA fighter, is that correct? Yeah. So, which ones were those? So, uh, yeah. so I have one pro professional kickboxing K1 title and two MMA titles, both from PFC promotion. Okay, fantastic. And uh, did you have a long amateur career, or was it uh, quite quite a quick rise? Uh, I have a couple of fights. Um, I have like I have like eight eight to eight to nine uh, kickboxing fights, and I have also eight 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 MMA fights here as well. I think so. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So, so you you had. Uh, Quite a quite a wealth of experience when it comes to combat sports, which is quite interesting. I yeah. think most guys your age are just tossing around yeah. a few fights, a couple of amateur fights, maybe a quick title, and then, and then off to the EFC. Um, so just talk us. 
was the EFC always always a goal, or, or was it kind of like a like a childhood dream? You know, watching a guy like Anderson Silva um, that made you pursue MMA, or, or, or was it in your mind really as a youngster to say, okay, uh, Anderson Silva is my hero, MMA is what I want to do, and the EFC is where I want to go from now. Um, so basically, I always wanted to be an EFC fighter, but I was never, I never believed in myself. I never thought I'd be making this far, you know. So as I started winning, winning MMA fights, I said, "No, look, you can't be, you can't be like Anderson Silva. You can't be like this guy. You just have to continue training. You gotta believe in yourself." And I started believing in myself more. And every time when I fight, I just get better and better, you know. My confidence just get higher and higher. So. <laughs> Fantastic, man. That's awesome to hear, the, the belief. And um, what was the feeling like when, when you got approached by the EFC to say, look, we, we're going to sign you as a professional fighter? How did, how did that make you feel? Yeah, it was a deep, it was a dream come true. I was a bit nervous. Dream come true. I was a bit nervous, but, um, you know, I said, you know, nervous is part of the game, but as long as they have the heart for it, then you can do it, you can achieve it, you know. So I was just waiting and I felt like this is my time. Beautiful, Obviously, you're one of those guys who, who came in with, with quite a bit of a hype. I, I know at the time your camp was was uh, showing clips of you and the, the power that you possessed and um, you know the great hype that you came with, you know the K1 background, the titles uh, as an amateur. So there was already this this hype for those who were paying attention. And, yeah. and and so far you've lived up to that, man. You've come in, you've destroyed everybody in your path. You've made pretty good fighters look look quite ordinary. Um, so, just talk us through is, is, is the, the first round KO, as you mentioned, that's what, what you're after. A couple of first round finishes um, early on in your career. Is, is that something you set out to do, or is it kind of something that just happens along the way? Uh, so, basically, you know, I always train myself. I believe I can, see, I can predict any fight as long as I train hard. You know, what you put in is what you get out. So. Whenever I say, whenever I tell someone that the fight won't last longer than two rounds, I mean it because I believe, I know how hard I work and I believe the person hasn't worked harder than me because, you know, while they're sleeping, I'm training. So that's where the confidence comes from, it's from training. It's all from putting in the work without the hard work. Hard work beats talent, you know what I mean? You can be talented, but without putting the hard work, you're not going to go anywhere. So I'm training, I always predict my fights won't last longer than two rounds. Man. Obviously, that that next message will be sent across to Gordon Rutman, um, who's, who's obviously a guy who's been around a while. He, he's been competing in the EFC for quite some time. Um, you're going to be making your main card debut on, on the first card of the year. It, it, it's a cracking card. Um, is it is it any extra nerves? Firstly, and and what do you make of this matchup for yourself against Gordon Rutman? It's actually a good fight for me, you know. There I get to see where I am in the EFC. I get to see if I'm worth fighting for the title or something like that. So I'm actually excited for this fight. Gordon is one of the guys who I used to look up when I was young. You know, I always, there's a lot of guys in the EFC now who wants to fight me who I used to look up to. You know what I mean? Who I used to say, yo, this guy is very tough. This guy is a champ. But look at me now. I'm fighting against him, you know. So I feel good, you know. I feel it's actually motivating. For me, fighting guys who I look up to, you know, so it's like, uh, and the Sanya said in the UFC, uh, they brought me to this generation, I'm taking them out of this generation, you know what I mean? So that's what's up, you know, it's going to be a good fight, I'm enjoying it, I just keep getting better and better each and every fight, and you guys are going to see that. Fantastic, man. And uh, just, obviously, it's, it, it's a step up, you're, you're fighting at middleweight, does that affect you in any way? It doesn't affect me at all. I used to fight at middleweight in kickboxing as well. I got good sparring. I got good sparring partners. I spar heavyweights, middleweight. So stepping up to middleweight is not a problem with me. It's not a problem with me. It actually uh, makes me more fitter and I have more more power, you know. So they don't call me the power for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> And um, you, you mentioned sparring partners, teammates there. Obviously, the, the, the biggest of the last at the moment, champion Dolce. Um, we saw him in your corner last time out. Just just talk us through what that's like, having someone like that who's obviously worked so hard and, and, and come from pretty much nothing. Um, I'm sure there's a couple of stories you guys can relate to with him. Um, and what is that like at the moment? Obviously, your camp must be pretty galvanized on the news of him signing for the, for the UFC. 
So basically, Champion Dodge, he started with me when I started the sports as well. He was always there for me. Whenever I needed something, he was there for me. Whenever I needed tips for me, he was there for me. So, yeah, what can I say? Um, you know, I'm, I, everybody says that I'm the next archer. I am the next archer for EFC, and I'm, I, I will be following his footsteps very soon. I'm also going to the UFC, you know. So I believe in myself, you know. And I got a guy who, can, who, uh, who mentors me, you know, tells me, don't do this, don't do that, you know, we can uh, we make fast, you know. So I'm very confident with this fight. That's awesome, man. And it's, it's so exciting to see young prospects like yourself really really pushing the edge now and, and you've got the inspiration right in front of you to get to the UFC. Just on that, obviously, uh, uh, to punch your ticket, there's a couple of guys on top of the roster. Um, there's there's going to be a, I guess, there's going to be a, a welterweight uh, fight to clear up the, the, the top three standings, if we can say. So have you got your eyes on that title and, and, and do you think you're going to start to push for that title before the year is done? Uh, yeah, I've got my eyes on the title. So I think after this fight, maybe for winning classes, I deserve a title shot, you know, because I'm a man of my words. Whenever I say something, it happens, you know. These guys were so full four times, they, they didn't really fight off guys, but they got title shot. So I think after this fight, if I win it very great, I think I deserve a title shot. You know, awesome, man. Thank but if they, wanna, if they wanna give me something, if they wanna give me anyone else in the world where I'm ready to take on it, anybody, I don't want to win from fights, you know, because the experience of doing the work, Ready for awesome, man. And uh, just uh, obviously, you've got that fight with Gordon Whitman coming up, EFC 77. Uh, just what would your last message for Gordon Whitman be? Uh, I don't have any message for him. You know, I've seen him on social media trying to get into my head. Like, you know, like my previous fight with Kitty Cox, and you know, the same thing. You know, guys who scared them to want to fight with you through social media or through Wayne. After that, but I believe when it comes to the actual fight, you know, they got nothing to, you know, they got nothing to keep in the fight. So you guys right. you can argue with me, you can do anything, but let's get in the cage and once the door is closed, and let's see if your mouth is as big as your, your you know, your, your, your fighting, you know, if your mouth is as good as your fighting. So I got no message for him. I'm just here to have fun. I hope he's here. I hope he's ready. I hope his training camp is very good, and let's give the guys a show what they want, you know. Fantastic, brother. Thank you so much for your time, man. Um, l like I said to you offline, you're a massively exciting prospect. I think you've got big things in your future. You you've come on the, st on the scene with the storm, and it's really exciting to see, man. And we wish you all the best, and good luck with the rest of the camp. And, and we'll be watching closely, man, and, and good luck. And thanks so much again. Thank you so much. Thank thanks you, brother. We'll see you at EFC 77, man. Thanks so much for your time, but we'll chat to you soon. Definitely. Thanks. Cheers, man. We're out. Ciao, man.